Uh, I'm Debbie Johnson Hill, and I'll be reading poetry today. But first, I'd like to thank a few people my husband Bob, my son Tom, and my friend Sandra Youngs from the Poet Squad for being here for moral support. I really appreciate that. I'd like to start uh, with my first poem, is titled Slip, and this is for Tally. I'm so proud of you. Today began with that morning blur, the one we swear being prepared will erase. Mismatched socks, misplaced keys, the slip that, oh God, somehow replaced the dress. As you step out of your car, full of water bottles, wrappers, school papers, debris of a life well lived, evidence you store there until that transcendent day when stars and moons align and your family is perfect, your husband's centered, and all is organized in rubble, rubber sealed containers, which leaves you alone the source of all ills, you in the parking lot, you in the slip, minus the dress. <laughs> second poem is titled Drive-By Shoes. I was driving along the freeway today, listening to NPR's debate on the threat of ISIS, terrorists enlisting even from the state of Minnesota nice. When a Dodge Caravan speeding past rolled down its window and out soared a single shoe, no explanation or apology, no brake lights signaling a change of heart, just an errant loafer discarded for not carrying its weight. So this is how I, it happens, I thought, recalling the sight of another lone shoe kicked to the median strip of our shoe-lined interstates, while its counterpart, counterpart of sole and heel trembles on the floorboard, a last-ditch effort to escape detection. <laughs> My husband claims he still has not seen a shoe on the side of the road. So. <laughs> My next poem I wrote, uh, I think it was around 1 a.m. Uh, I was in Julia Patterson's Forms and Elements class. At the same time, I was in Matt Olson, I don't think Matt is here, Matt's uh, statistics class. I'm not a math person. And both were due the next day. Oh, uh, it was not a good night, but it got done. Yes. <laughs> This is titled Bonferroni Stew. I drift into a fitful sleep as my troubled mind stirs, ingredients added one by one, pot worn by wear, metal and copper scorched by too many uses over time, spoonfuls of alphas and beta in my statistical soup blended over flame, and even in my dreams I see the square roots simmer. One by one, into the mix, the samples go. Bubbles form round the central tendency, nominal variables stirring my mind from sleep, disturbed by blue flame turned orange. Mean, mode, median, added to the stockpot, sums of squared errors, peppered and measured, stirred with rank order repetition, lest it burn. While I ponder my power tables, Flames climb higher as I add cups of raw scores simmering, just enough for Bonferroni to demand a spoonful. Not enough, he adds a splash of Kramer's spy, ladling degrees of freedom into the plentiful pan, confidence intervals spilling down the sides, singed. My hand hot as I wipe. Partial correlation coefficients burn the small entering my senses, even in sleep, blazing fire dichotomizing the phoenix from the ashes, numerators and denominators in the double boiler. I toss and turn, knowing the correlation between cook and confidence limits a delicate balance. I churn the thick robustness. Sampling just enough dollops to keep it all straight, keep it holding constant. Teaspoons are more than I can measure. Errors, errors, errors burn my confidence interval. But I focus on the task, stir the different scores, tend the grand means, fry up main effect, but stay focused on the simmering. 
sampling songs of all the parts, stewing in the pot on my stove, in my dreams, in my stock pot, the standard deviations for myself, cooked, overcooked, pureed probabilities, reduced by fire, once independent, now congealed by flame. Theorems burned into a restless mind, stirred. When exhaustion whips my values, I step away from the pot, watching the pan burn, the crusted spoon, the ingredients bubble, simmer, stew. Those sustainers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's a little lighter one. It's titled Mother Gusana. Oh. If you are early, your mother once said, her voice a word dancing inside your head. Above the clouds, you lick the sky and thread the eye of a lullaby. While little boy blue done blown his horn, the sheep in the barnyard, the cows eating corn, while you row and you row till you sow what you reap. By then you have little, if nothing, to eat. But hey, did the middle still fiddle with rings while Humpty still grumpy collects his things? Mary, quite Mary, contrarily calls Jack and Jill up the hill till one of them falls in the bucket with luck you eventually find. The bird with the, the bird with the worm, yes, all in due time. <laughs> and that was what the collage was about this morning. <laughs> all right. Last poem I'd like to read is An Apology to My Inner Poet, who took the day off after a brief stint in sub-zero temps. He didn't even call in sick. I hear he took a red eye, woo to warmer climates, bronzing oil, Ray-Ban, spandex speedo, two sizes too small. Perhaps a greyhound with his duffel bag in tow, regaling my reluctant nature to his fellow travelers. Debbie the poet? Total slacker. Now that I think of it, I can't say I blame him. Every day he perched in the corner of the study, tapping his fingers on the armrest, his gaze piercing the back of my head. While I clean what is already spotless, invent more to-do lists, sharpened already pointed pencil, shifted a word from here to there, knowing tomorrow he would phone, and after a moment's hesitation say, hey, can we meet for drinks? My guilt-ridden self will take him back. <laughs>